Since taking office, it's been no secret Congressman Michael Sun Nicholas has been critical of local leaders. So if you were expecting him to take aim during his congressional address, that didn't exactly happen. My initial temptation was to use this day as an opportunity to engage the hostility that we have faced over the past year with equally veiled hostility. But we are not going to do that. Instead, we'll begin by saying, peace be with you. For two hours, the congressman recapped bills he's introduced in Congress, such as H.R. 208, which would extend the Supplemental Security Income Program to all eligible recipients in Guam, H.R. 1713 to compensate military veterans for Agent Orange exposure on Guam, and H.R. 1365 to correct technical errors to pay out war claims. With the enactment of local war claims payout bill 181 into law, the congressman said while setting aside an additional 14 million in local funds for a local war claims plan is admirable, it just presents unnecessary risk to the current process. Instead, the congressman asked local leaders to repeal 181 and instead use the money for the Tomorrow Land Trust Commission. Many of our families waiting for war claims are also waiting for their Tomorrow Land Trust lands. And 14 million in local funds is enough to survey all the lands for everyone waiting, 9,000 people and their families. Senators, Governor, working together, we can make this new year, 2020, the year we pay war claims and distribute tomorrow land trust lands. Aside from H.R. 1365, the congressman also touted his accomplishment in serving in the coveted A-list House Committee on Financial Services, and thus Guam has risen to be an A-list player. Sir Nicholas also announced the first formal creation of a Congressional Veterans Advisory Council, of which will be spearheaded by local veteran John Ananinch. This entity shall be a registered nonprofit organization dedicated to aligning congressional findings and resources with concrete solutions to the struggles of all of our veterans. On the military buildup, the congressman said that while he agrees that the net military occupation of land should not increase and that excess land should be returned, he is firmly convinced that the presence of the military on Guam is vital to the protection of our way of life. Folks, I've seen in high-level briefings the force projections. China is not messing around. During his address, the congressman acknowledged a few senators, such as James Moylan, Mary Torres, Clint Rigel, as well as Senator Therese Terlahi. He also acknowledged the Republican Party of Guam for their efforts in seeking support for H.R. 1365. Throughout his address, the congressman played video clips of his various moments during his first year in office. KUAM spoke with newly appointed minority leader Senator Tello Taidegui and former congressman Robert Underwood. I guess the biggest elephant in the room, though, was the question as to the allegations that were made toward him on ethics issues as well as the, um, the campaign funds. Many people want to know what's going on, and for him to completely disregard those accusations, uh, the people of Guam need to know what's going on. We're supposed to trust this, our, our congressman, but it, it wasn't to fruition. And um, I'm just really surprised that, uh, especially when there was a report that was put out uh, recently about his attendance in, in Congress, it's staggering. I'm surprised even he had video footage to show, considering that came out. He had a lot of uh, pretty interesting ideas, but of course, uh, he still hasn't passed a bill. And uh, 1365 still hasn't passed. He spent more money than any other delegate. He, would, he, in, he was the first delegate to introduce a bill in Congress, but the last delegate to speak on the floor. And I'm just waiting for some action. There's just nothing yet. There's so nothing so that has actually been achieved. He slapped himself so much in the back, I thought he broke his own. But no, I, I shouldn't have said that. Uh, basically, uh, the speech was, uh, he should be congratulated for being on an exclusive committee. But that, that committee's only been exclusive for about three, two or three terms. But it's, it, what is important is not that he's on the exclusive committee. What has he done with it? According to GovTrap.us, from January 2019 to December of last year, Congressman St. Nicholas missed 152 of 291 roll call votes. He sponsored 10 bills. All but one, H.R. 1365, made it out of committee. Additionally, according to the website, all 10 bills show about a 3% chance of being enacted. How confident are you that any of your bills will be enacted? Well, the probability of us passing the House when we first introduced 1365 was about 9%. We passed the House. The probability of us passing the Senate is about 21 percent. 
So the key to understanding the value of your representation isn't in what websites tell you, it's in the outcomes. And if we're able to get things passed with such odds stacked against us, that just speaks to the value of the representation. The website tracks the status of federal legislation as well as information about the voting records of members in Congress, oversight, as well as investigations. Any final message to the people of Hmong? It's just so good to be home. D.C. is so cold. I'm an island boy and just I'm, I'm so happy to be here. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Sabrina Salas, Matanani.